All right, I'm going to show you how to use one of these, a jeweler saw. And here's a smaller one. Also, you're going to need an assortment or a set or however you want to put it in of saw blades for them. All right, so this is how you're probably going to get yours. They can look different between different brands. And I personally like this one better because the throat is a lot bigger. So you can cut a lot easier on bigger objects. All right, so this next part is very important, so pay attention or you're not going to be able to cut metals how you would like to. As you can see from this graph, it shows you what thickness you need to be cutting on in inches and centimeters and what blade goes along with it and also what gauges will cut with it. You can use this and get exactly what you need. I have never used this chart and I go based off of how I feel with each blade by testing it on different metals. So the choice is yours really. So this is how you want your saw blade to look. You want the teeth facing down. So when you pull downwards it catches and cuts. If you have it the opposite direction you'll be pulling your piece up and it just doesn't work properly. So this is a 0.68 millimeter piece of copper. And it's pretty rigid you can see I can bend it and it bounces right back. This is a 0.27 piece of brass and I can bend it and it stays. Cutting on that is very hard to do. It's easier just to use snips. Alright now let's get a saw blade on this. First loosen up every point of it so you can slide it. Mine is a little sticky from oil that I used for sawing so yours should just open right up. All right, now pick your saw blade. All right, once you get the saw blade into the first one, just tighten it down, and then kind of adjust it so you can fit it into the top end. Once you got that, tighten it. And now to tighten the blade, you push up right here, and pull, and tighten. And it should be nice and tight now and don't push too hard but it should just be a really tight blade same thing with this one both of these pretty much work the same but there are different designs for different tightening points so just a alright so I use regular vegetable oil a spray paint can top and a q-tip and I just lightly apply it to the blade real quick barely anything I'll do it to this one too to show you and there we go you also need to apply it while cutting so first you're gonna want to mark the piece I use printer paper and print out the pattern I made in illustrator and use an adhesive on the back to basically glue it to the piece of metal once that's done I kinda let it dry a little bit and make sure it's stuck because it will slip off. This piece is a little more complicated than others because I'm going to be drilling holes to cut out center pieces so I use a punch and I don't punch it all the way down because it will dent the metal in ways I don't want it so I just kind of make a point. Basically a little starter hole so I can drill it out. And I make sure to go to all the areas that need a hole. Then take my drill with a micro drill bit that I have, which I'll have in the link, and drill it all out. Alright, to cut out holes that are inside of something, you're going to need to undo your blade and put it through the hole that you just drilled. Once you do that, careful not to break the blade and reattach everything. Reset your saw and start sawing. Um, this part's going to be a little backwards just because I'll be teaching you after I cut these out how to maneuver the blade so you can actually do what I'm doing here. I wanted to show this so you can see how cutting out a piece inside of another piece works.
Alright, so here's how you cut with the blade. What you want to do is put it up against the metal you want and push up first to make an initial cut and then pull down. If it doesn't work, just push up again and go down until it catches. Then you're going to want to keep moving your hand up and down without turning or really angling as much as you can. And how you're supposed to use one of these is you turn the work under it and keep it straight at all times. I don't do that. I turn the work, I turn the blade whenever I need to. So I do it completely wrong, but it works. And I can get very detailed with a lot of my work as you may have seen on my website and on my shop. So you are going to get snagged every once in a while, or it's just going to get harder to cut. You can add a very small amount of oil to the blade, and it makes it a lot easier to cut through the metal width. Also, if you get snagged and it just will not saw anymore, you probably turned your blade or the piece too much, and you're going to need to readjust it. So what I do is just let go of the piece and slightly let go of the blade itself, and it will all move back to where it's aligned and then try moving it gently. If you're too rough with the blade, you'll just break it. Alright, so if we're going around corners or edges, you always want the blade to be moving. So, if you need to curve, be sawing and slowly moving it at the same time. If you need to make a hard angle or a hard turn, saw up and down one spot and slowly turn the piece or the blade, depending on how you want to do it, and it will actually turn with it. You can't just So far so good. It looks as good as I can for right now just because I'm on camera and there's a tripod right here and it makes it really hard for me to cut when it was on the really big piece. So my lines are going to be 100% straight in the middle pieces but this is just for video sake. When I actually work on things it's a lot cleaner. Alright there we go. All cut out. And flip it over. Make sure everything's nice and clean. You're going to have a burr along all the edges that you're going to need to file down. But yeah, that's basically what happens after you cut it out. And now I just need to peel this off with a knife, most likely. Alright, so now you're going to want to file the edges down. And then get a Dremel, because Dremel's way faster. And what I'm going to use is the rubber diamond tips that I have shown in other videos. Alright, once all that's done, it should be all deburred, and I'm just going to buff it up now, but you're pretty much done. If you're wondering what I'm using to shine up the piece, Check out my video on how to make a ring from scratch and I go through what I use and what order I use them in and how to get whatever piece of metal you're working with to have a almost mirror-like finish. Alright, there we go. It's all done. If you have any questions, comments, concerns about this or corrections, leave a comment. Um, I'm going to be putting up videos twice a week, like I've been doing, and it's going to be working up to making a pretty detailed ring with a stone set into it, so keep following my videos. Well, I guess this is it, and I'll see you guys next time.